Hello everyone, welcome back to YK Reviews for today's video. As we continue the Halloween franchise movie reviews, we get, we get into the next installment of the franchise called Halloween H2O 20 years later or Halloween Halloween 20, 20 years later if you want to get really technical. And with this installment, we've got the return of Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode facing off against Michael Myers. So let's get into it here. <laughs> So with this um, installment, with this movie, it's essentially basically rebooting the timeline. So everything that happened in the previous movies, four, five, six, all just got erased. And this is a brand new timeline. And Halloween is famous for the multiple different timelines that they have. And I'll get into that when I do the review of Halloween Ends, all the different timelines and my favorite one in terms of that. But with this one, it's essentially Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween H2O, basically. So with this one, we start off with the opening of the music, Mr. Sandman, which I love that song with this Halloween franchise. It's such a classic song and it's such a great song to play for this type of movie. So you start off with that and then you get the opening sequence, which is Nurse Miriam, who was in the um, first and second movie and the one that revealed how Michael and Laurie are like siblings. So we get to her and, and we see her coming in and she it looks as if somebody has broken into her house you get a lot of like different easter eggs to like other horror movies too because when she goes and like asks these teenagers in the neighborhood you've got um one kid who's played by joseph gordon levitt and he's wearing like this jason Voorhees looking like with the mask and with the um hockey sticks and there's also a cenobite in the background too of like the halloween decoration little nod to um hellraiser which is will be the next movie franchise i'll be reviewing for this month so we'll keep an eye out on that but she asks them to go to take a look into the house to see if there's an intruder there if there's anybody inside the house and so like they take a look around they let her know that like no the house is empty nobody's here so then she um comes to find out that the file of, of laurie strode is gone and she goes to go check back on the teenagers and finds out that they have been killed and comes confronted by michael myers and you have this epic tense filled scene of like the police arriving miriam trying to like escape from michael trying to like fight back my she like smashes a window tries to scream for like help thing that's saying that she's in there only for like michael to come and just slit her throat while the police are trying to investigate it was a great great opening sequence a great kill and i'm just gonna get this right out the way now there were so many different masks it was like i think four masks used in this movie the one that in that opening sequence looked pretty decent because i think it was the one from the halloween 6 movie but then you've got um the cgi mask which is laughable and hilarious and just so bad and then you've got like the main mask that was used throughout the movie in itself and my problem is with that i think it was the actor because the, the mask was too tight but then the eye holes you could clearly see his eyes just moving around it looked so awkward and did not look intimidating whatsoever so it just was a really bad mask for this movie in itself so i'm just throwing that out there like especially when that epic shot which will come on later in the movie it just looked so bad with his eyes being so exposed and that cgi mask too but then you get to nurse Marion being killed by michael myers and so then once the police do arrive you kind of just get this sort of explanation to the audience of like what's going on here we find out that dr loomis has been being looked after by like nurse miriam and that he was still like heavily focused on like michael myers and we sort of see like what's going on with like um laurie strode and so we get to the next scene which we go and see what laurie strode's been up to so we find out that she faked her own death she's a, um, going by a different name living all the way in california now we find out that she's got a son as well who's called John, which I think it might be like a nod to John Carpenter there. And then her name as well is like Kerry Tate, which is her like fake name. So we find out that she's like a um, teacher um, in this school and her son is like going to the school. We find out that she's getting divorced, but you kind of see like this, um, not extreme paranoia that she has, but she's sort of like during the Halloween season is very like heavy handed. Um, you see the relationship between her and her son, John, who I think is like 17 years old at this point now. And like, they have a good relationship. They have a good relationship. However, like she's very paranoid, very strict, very like overprotective with him. Doesn't want him to go on this trip with the school and everything. And just always has like her eye on it, which is 
I like this version because I understand like you come to come you come face to face with a mass murderer and obviously it's going to have an impact on you when we get to like Halloween 2018 and that version of Laurie Strode so over the top and extreme I feel like this is a much better version of this of Laurie Strode so you see her always like keeping an eye out watching her son making sure that he's protected especially during the Halloween season and we also find out that Laurie is sort of like having a relationship with one of the um I believe also the head teacher or just one of the teacher's faculty members of the school named Will so like you see them sort of like developing a relationship there and then you come across a because now that Michael Myers has got Laurie Strode's files, knows where she is, you see Michael Myers driving across the country. And I love the fact that you have Michael Myers driving from Chicago all the way to California. God knows what he did in between, because I'm pretty sure you have to go um, fill up gas or petrol. I'm pretty sure you need to go like bathroom breaks, snacks, that kind of stuff from the whole journey. So I just picture him in his Michael Myers outfit, pumping gas in his car, using the washroom, that kind of stuff. So it's just, I have that image on there, but you see him driving so fast that he's burnt out his tires. And so he needs to go get a new vehicle. And that's when he comes across with this mother and daughter who are at this rest stop. They go to the bathroom. You see like Michael not killing them, which is a surprise. So he just goes and steals the keys and then just takes the car and like continues his drive to California. So then once we get into that section, we see the next introduction to the character LL Cool J, who we find out is like the security of this campus. And I love LL Cool J. He was just, he was so funny and entertaining in this movie in itself. We find out that he's writing these erotic novels um, throughout the movie and we see his interaction. So basically John is planning to like have a party with his friends since he's not allowed to go on this school trip. So he's trying to leave the campus, which he convinces um, LL Cool J to allow him to do. And then you, he ends up running into his own mother, Laurie. And I love that interaction. I love like her commentary between him and just it was really funny watching them interact together charlie here go get in the car i'll be right there what the fuck do you think you're doing Mom, i'm really uncomfortable with you saying that well word. then don't put me in the position john so he manages to like calm her down and convince her like to not be as paranoid which she finally allows him to go on the school trip but instead of actually going there he's deciding to continue with going to the party having the party with his friends so as the movie's progressing, we're going into the second towards the third act. We see Michael Myers now, who has found the location, entering the campus and cracked me up. It's how easy Michael is just, just walking past the security of LL Cool J, how just easy it was. And even Michael just coming back to like probably read the novels and everything like that that you see from LL Cool J. But it's just so casual and easy for him to just walk past. And the only thing that I think was very just weird a weird thing to put into the movie is so like you've got Laurie now opening up to her, her boyfriend Will about the Halloween situation about Michael Myers how that how this like weird connection of like Michael killed his sister when she was 17 and then Michael chased after Laurie when she was 17 at the time and now her son is 17 and Michael she feels like Michael's coming back I just thought that was a weird like cool it was a nice connection there but it's just a very weird thing not over the top or extreme but a very weird narrative to add to the movie in itself so then she because of this is now wanting to go find her son john she goes to the room she finds out that his bag is still there realizes that he never ended up going to the trip and so then you've got like this little intense scene of michael just killing john's friends off one by one in so many different manners so you get this scene of michael killing off the friends like one by one in the most epic and gruesome way like you see one of the um male characters get get his throat slit and he's in that um what do you call those things where you the waiters um put the plates and cutlery and like dishes all the way up that so they find like she finds him dead in that with his throat cut with a corkscrew michael myers chases one of the female characters drops the um that machinery thingy onto her leg and then just stabs her in the back and so John and this um, other female character, his girlfriend, basically start running away from Michael. And I love that little scene of Michael catching up with them and John just trying to go and punch him in the face. It was just so funny. It's like a, it reminds me of um, Halloween 4 when Rachel's ex-boyfriend tried to 
punch him in the face. It was just so funny when you try to go face to face with Michael hand to hand combat and he just tries punching him in the face. It was so funny. But they end up getting away. They end up um, reuniting with Laurie and um, Will. They see this character coming in and so Will goes and shoots and you find out that it's LL Cool J thinking that he got killed only because you find out later in the movie he survives but he gets shot. And then you have, for me, one of the most enjoyable third acts final battle sort of Laurie versus Michael so as I mentioned earlier when you finally get that that epic scene of like Michael facing Laurie like that face to face the mask just ruins it for me so Michael does end up killing Will um, similar to like how he killed that nurse in Halloween 2 just like stabbing him in the back so <sighs> Will dies and, and then you've got John managing to escape and so then you have that final like the battle between Michael and Laurie and just like so then you get like the epic encounter between Michael and Laurie you get like little callbacks when Michael goes and slashes her arm similar to like how it was in the first one and then my favorite scene in the whole movie when Laurie does some WWE type move and just throws Michael through the table winning a tables match if this was WWE <laughs> It looks like she's about to go kill him off, finally ending it, and then you see LL Cool J stopping her from preventing Michael from dying. So you, yeah, you find out that LL Cool J is still alive. He stops Laurie. Police arrive at the scene. They're taking like Michael away, but obviously Laurie doesn't. So Laurie goes and grabs an axe, grabs a gun, goes, takes the ambulance that Michael has basically um, ended up in, and just like driving recklessly. She ends up like um, flipping the van over. So Michael is basically stuck between the van and the tree. So you've just got this epic scene of Laurie using the axe and chopping Michael's head off, thinking that he's dead here. And sorry for like the noise in the background. I've just got like the upstairs neighbors making a shit ton of noise. So if you do hear a lot of noise in the background, it's because of that. So then we get the epic conclusion. We're thinking that Laurie has finally beaten Michael and the end of the movie in itself. And for me, overall, I, I really enjoyed this movie. It was a very nice return to like the Laurie saga. It's one of the most enjoyable timelines because you've got Halloween 1, you've got Halloween 2, and then this one. Only thing that ruins it is what they do in the next one with Halloween Resurrection, which we will come to in the next video. But if you have seen this movie, let me know down in the comment section below what you thought about it. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if you hated it, what you thought about this one and in terms of the timeline in itself. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. But this is YK Reviews. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.